Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and a video on how I was building my pipe bomb base, the kind of the experiment that I was doing to, to put it together. Now this is kind of the final sort of iteration of it that I was working on. Um, just so you guys can see what um, I meant by building the little bunkers in the corner and things like that. So essentially it's the same pipe bomb base. It's a little different. The blocks are slightly different here. Uh, the old one had these angle blocks running all the way up and stuff. This one, I, I kind of cut them off here just so that the zombies pile up, they get knocked back down. So they have no real chance to get a little higher. Um, and then of course these are the swinging doors that I can drop shit down on the, on the uh, zombies. So if I'm up top and they're down here banging on stuff, I can go ahead and do that. Um, I've done the whole thing, I've painted the whole thing so you can see how it works. Um, these blocks here are so that when the zombies kind of walk up, they can't, you know, they walk up and then they can't see me. So they're up here getting shot. It uh, gives you less chance to get headshots, but then once again, this is a pipe bomb base. It's not designed necessarily as a headshot base. But you have plenty of time because there's two sets of electric fences, one here and then one right here. Once they get to here, they get shocked and then they'll be standing here while you shoot them. Um, so this is kind of how the, I meant with the electric fences, how there's four um, little bunkers in the corner. Each one's got two sets of electric fences set down one level. Um, on concrete, everything is concrete all the way underneath this thing. So, and of course these two run just over there and that's it, right? So the wires come down from above, hook up to this side, and run just, you know, these two sets and then the same thing on the other corner and run into the two sets over there. Um, so that when the zombies kind of show up, right, they might take swings at this or hit this, but most of the time they're just going to walk right over it. Um, and somehow that broke. Why is that breaking? What did they do to the blocks? You know what it is? There was a structural update. Oh man, and I'm wondering if the stability of all these blocks is whack because of it. Because this is properly rested on top of this and this block is supporting this block, so this should never happen. So I'm guessing if I go ahead and do this and then replace these with blocks to so bring some concrete down just so I don't look like a total ass. <laughs> um, let's copy or rotation, right? So that won't let sit on top of there. Yeah, that doesn't sit on there. But it's not supposed to, right? Like, it's supposed to be like... Um, yeah, like that and like that. Right? And then here. And there. Which is how I had it. And then... Uh, copy shape. Watch this not work now. Um, because I did this before they did the updates. Right? And then I had uh, copy shape. And we want to copy this rotation. Right? Yeah, see? It's because of the structural update. So they updated... There was a structural issue a while back that I think it was Skippy that noticed. Um... It was a YouTuber that noticed that there was a structural issue where if you built your base and then took a block out and then replaced the block, the structure didn't go back to normal. It still saw it as that block, like, not being there, like the replaced block. So there was a massive structural problem because there was no way to be able to test the structure of your base. I have no idea why this corner block broke either. So my guess is that that's exactly what happened, is that when they updated the... Um, yeah, when they updated it, so I'm in the experimental version again right now too, so when they updated it, somehow it messed up the uh, the coding. And now these are seen as structurally unsound, even though they're not. So, that's interesting. 
So that, I mean, this might require a bit more testing on my part. Like I said, I've never tested against this against a horde. It just, in theory, should work just fine. But I have no idea what the heck is up with that. I should actually probably quit out and come back in to see if it does the same thing. Like, it shouldn't. Right? It's so bizarre that it does, but... Anyway, here's the... So that's the bottom. The bottom is the same as what I built you know, in the last episode of the Concrete Jungle, Jungle Series number 14. The, the So the base part is basically the same. So now the zombies... You know, once you're on the upper part there, the zombies kind of come along here. They got a double walkway up. They walk onto this trigger plate, which then they're being shot in the back, in the legs. I put the, this down lower so that it can shoot dogs and crawlers and spider zombies and any, anyone that's coming along here, right? Rather than shooting this regular zombies in the back. It shoots everybody. Um, and don't ask me why this is like this. I have no idea. That's how the world spawned. Anyway, uh, this is where the junk turret goes. Jun Once again... Once again, I have no idea what the hell's up with the structural integrity. Oh, man, really? Oops. Not really that good with the... Uh, there we go. I'm not really that good with the... Um, the uh, developer commands because I don't normally do this uh, but anyway yeah so yeah I don't even know what to say <laughs> that is so bizarre that is so bizarre is there, a, there I know there's a command hang on a minute bear with me for a second here so there is physics is active let's get rid of I, I don't know show stability glue that's it there Uh, that, that's not it. Um, there is a... There it is. Show stability. There. So the green is good to go, and... Like, the orange or red is bad. Yes, yeah, so see, that's all orange, right? Because it's like... Thinks it can't be supported. And it's the same there, now that I put those blocks in. But I was able to walk on it. But I wasn't able to walk on those. So I think it was because this was built pre-update, which is why it's weird. Uh, is there... I think there's a... Um, one of the commands is like a recalculate stability. Um, recalculate stability. Nope, that's what it's saying. That is so weird. Because there's nothing about this that said that that should have collapsed. Nothing at all. There's no extra weight. It's how I've always built it. The pillars are like four apart. And you should be able to go eight with concrete, no problem. I don't understand why this is seeing as being seen as like overweight when there's like plenty of support under, under here. You know, there's plates that support it going across. That's only six to there, and then six to there, but it's supported by that block and that block that are coming off of the sides here. I don't know. I don't know. That is so bizarre. So I'm probably going to have to, like, rebuild this base then to retest it out. But anyway, the idea is once you're inside, I can't even land because I don't know if this is going to collapse or not. So the idea is once you're inside, though, you've got these doors, like, once you're up above, if they're banging on the walls, you have the capability to be able to at least see down here, right, and drop shit on them or shoot them if you want. So there's a door on each of the three sides. That's not the front. And then the front here, while you're fighting the zombies, and once they're falling off, if they're banging on stuff below, you've got the shutters here that you can reach down and, you know, open and close if you need to. Uh, and they're set up in such a way that you can't actually get through here at all. I mean, you could fall down there, but I put this block in here to kind of block you. So, so unless you crouch, you should be fine. And then this side, here's the um, wire fences that run across here. One I've got at head level, one i got at leg level, just simply because I, uh, rather than making this too wide, I only made it one wide. And then they're easily repairable from inside here. Standard three hatches, you know. 
that blocks the door. And then I've got a little angle here on either, like a little bit of space on either side so we can see over here left and right if we have to, uh, but not much. The switches here, this switch powers the one side. So the wire fence is on that corner over there. Then the second switch down here power, powers these ones. This powers the, the um, turret above and the wire tur the uh, electric fence is here. And then up on top, all you've got is a small hatch and a SMG turret which handles the birds. And that's it. It's a pretty straightforward, simple blockhouse build that uh, when you haven't built it in an, in an old version and then logged into a new version uh, to find that it's structurally unsound, uh, it actually works quite well. So um, I'll probably be building a base like, like this in Darkness Falls. It'll be quite different, I think, um, in terms of layout because the main blockhouse will be the same. So the, this main part here will be the same roughly, but how we the zombies get to it will be different. So the idea with, with the new one will be that the zombies will most likely approach it from this way, right? So they'll see this is the way up. They'll, they'll climb up the stairs here, get to this level. Right next to it here like this, there'll be a blockhouse, or a, 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 a block all the way along with dart traps, and, and on top will be SMG turrets pointing directly at the zombies. So they'll be going through the gauntlet of that, coming around here, once again, still going through the gauntlet of being shot in the back, right? Come up this way. Um, if they manage to get past the um, the sledge turret and don't get knocked off, they'll come up here and then head right to the base, get get electrocuted and be shot here. Now the behemoths and stuff, because they're three blocks tall, will run into this and hopefully be kept away enough that they won't be able to swing and hit. And they'll probably still be able to hit the hatches. I know the the one behemoth that is designed to wreck buildings. That won't matter. I think they've got extra reach, so they'll be able to smash through here without too much of a problem. Um, in which case, we may have to rethink the way that this is designed uh, to try and hold them off at, at bay as long as we can keep them uh, uh, at range. Um, but then if we're doing repairs on the base at the same time, I'm going to try and do it so we don't have to do repairs, but we might have to do repairs at the base at the same time. Um, then we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, so they come along here, get electrocuted, and then they finally end their end here with a shotgun to the face or whatever. But the bottom, once again, is just designed... So this one is just designed slightly, slightly different than the last one because I put um, an angled block in here to be able to make sure that there is a, um, a full ladder all the time so that if, for whatever reason, one of those big demo guys came through here and was destroying blocks really fast, I'd just be able to jump up and get out. Now this would be converted to a steel ladder, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking. Um, I might leave this off and just leave it as wood, but make these two steel because I don't want the zombies getting in and then just being able to somehow get up on the ladder and then be trying to get up to me up here while I'm trying to defend here and here. It would be a nightmare. So which is why, which is why the thought was that these would just be wood and then I would carry wood with me and quickly drop a ladder in and then get out if I had to. But that's the idea um, behind this base. Once again, it's pretty simple. It's the two wires that go all the way around electric fences and you just drop the pipe bombs down there lands at their feet blows up kills them you know uh, you saw with the episode that they were trying to they were basically coming from this corner to try and get to me but deciding that that wasn't really the way to go because this is three blo blocks thick right so they would come along here make their way to here at which point you know I can see them quite easily and then just drop shit on them so yeah, I don't know whether how this is going to fare in a later game horde. Um, I think if I do build this in Darkness Falls, though, I'm going to go for the full 9x9 as opposed to a 7x7 blockhouse. Because it only gives us, like, a 3x3 in here. And I think it would be better if it was a 5x5 with more viewing area. And maybe if it's if I'm doing that, uh, maybe the viewing area would be a 2, like a 2x2 two two with a block in the center, and then a 2x2 two two with a block, and then... So if it was five wide, it would be like a two, a block, and then two more and a block. So that, you know, I could step behind here if there was a cop and you couldn't see me, and then I could step out again. Uh, same thing with a demon. If he's spitting at me, I could kind of step behind the block and he can't see me, and then I would step back out again. That kind of thing. Um, 
just to run the first half of the horde and then we would be up here for the second half you know I don't know how I would yeah I don't know anyway that's my thought for this for this base you know minus the instability like I should still be able to like if I go down come on like even in god mode there's still lag right whoops yeah you can tell I don't use this mode very often all right, now, uh, okay, so now, yeah, see, it's fine, but this one over here won't be. Now it is fine. I guess when I recalculated the stability, it fixed it. So there you go, proof of concept, it does work, right? The idea is that, like I said, is that they just walk up here, right? They walk over and then drop down into here. And then once they're in there, they're executed. I mean, I guess I gotta find a solution for the corners. You know? Um, maybe not, because if it, I mean, for Darkness Falls, it's not gonna be 64 max alive. It'll probably end up being 24. Just because it, when I did 64, it fried my computer, pretty much. Trying to run that last horde was brutal. 32 was bad too, so 24 is probably the, the way I'd go. Um, so yeah, actually, let's just quickly do this then. Uh, we want to copy block. Just to show you that it's actually not me. That it was actually the... Uh... The bad game calculations. Because I don't know what, like... Honestly, I'm speechless. That's hilarious though, it's like, oh yeah! Come take a look at my great base. And then I show you and it's just like, gets completely destroyed. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's, it's typical me though. Like if you really think about it, that's like, that's like the story of my life, right? All right, let's grab some stairs. So look how great this base is. Wait, it doesn't work. I'm sure it worked. Okay, that goes like that. And then under here we had... Uh, you could do a designer shape. It doesn't really matter what's under here. Let's do something interesting. Let's go this route. And then we'll do advanced. Like that. You know, it could be anything. But it should be relatively close to three high. Just so that the larger, um, the larger zombies can make their way through there. Which is why this is the way it is. And then we want to go ahead and do... Um... Uh, plates so the benefit of running the plates underneath this uh, is if for whatever reason they destroy a block up here um, and that's where the sledge turret goes so if they for whatever reason destroy a block up there then that plate is still there to basically say to the zombies yeah no no it's still okay to come along here right because if they come up wipe out the plate or wipe out the block then they'll drop down and then have to jump up and keep going. So there's still a way to, for them to get to you um, without, have, without you running to having to run out here and drop a concrete block in. Um, and that being said too is, I mean, the advantage to the, um, the new system as opposed to the old system is that you can carry these 500 hit point concrete blocks now. So if a zombie breaks your wall, you can just, you know, shoot them back quickly, drop another one in, and it's fully ready to go. Whereas before, when you had to upgrade them and they were wet concrete, they were only worth like 1250 or something like that. So even though you put rebar frame in and upgraded it to concrete, it still had to dry, so the zombies could easily break it. So you were better off carrying like a cobblestone block, um, or carrying a sorry, carrying a wood block and then upgrading it to cobblestone rather than dropping a rebar frame in and upgrading it to concrete. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea. There's these plates here on the outside too. It just it gives extra protection versus spit. So if cops are spitting or whatever, it just protects the wire fences that are in here. It gives them an extra layer of protection. Um, in this case, these blocks that are right here on this, like this one and this one, this one and this one, uh, I believe are the wall blocks here because you have to add... Am I right? Yeah, those are the wall blocks on the outside because of how narrow this is, right? So this is a one by one block. 
which means they have to have plates on the outside, which means if you break this plate right here, that should be the wire fence behind it. Yeah. So that's why these plates are here. They're basically just protecting the wire fence. So there's only one block thick here. Um, we'll copy rotation, just drop that back in real quick. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's just the, the base, the, the base build. It's pretty simple. Like I said, for Darkness Falls, it's going to be a little bit more elaborate than this. Because um, I'm not exactly sure what the zombies are going to do. You know, I love this little setup here because, like, you can just stand up here and drop shit on them. And if you were, like, so inclined, like, if you were, um, if you really wanted to run this base and not have to worry about, um, you know, this walkway or whatever, what you could do is start with the walkway gone, right? Like that. So this is how the base would sit. Uh, now, it's not ideal later on, like for a later game, because you want these blocks to be steel, but I think you can actually make... Actually, is there steel blocks? Yeah, so there is steel shapes. Right? So you can get steel shapes. So, you start off like this, you start off down below, they'll never even consider coming up to you, and then when you're ready, you come up here throw those in now they'll be like oh yeah we need to get to them and then if for whatever reason a demo goes off up here right um and blows that out and they start hitting on the base below you can just kind of come over here and just start dropping stuff down on them and it's good because you can see most of the base from here right like a molotov right there will handle people in the corners or a pipe bomb will same thing from here grenades and everything same thing it's easy to drop them through here i've actually tested it so uh, let's pull this out. Right, so you just quickly go like this. Perfect, right? It's just easy. You know, and then with pipe bombs it's the same thing. Plenty easy just to drop shit down on them. You know, and then you close these up when you're not using it, so... Nothing can accidentally happen. But yeah, it's a... You know... The fact that you can actually make blocks like this kind of, I don't know, for me it kind of defeats the purpose of building a super elaborate horde base because if you can just carry blocks around, you can, I mean, if, if you watch Glock 9 play, he's a, probably a pretty good example of it. To carry those blocks around, you can pretty much, like, just throw them down in any building really quick and do a quick horde base, right? Knock out the stairs for the upstairs, so that, and then you can just fall back to the attic, but then you, if you're building is having problem with structure you can just fill in the holes with concrete it's like it defeats the purpose of zombies destroying the concrete blocks right so if you got a wall and they, and they knock a block out then just quickly throw another fully fully um fully hit pointed concrete block back in like it just takes <laughs> you know what i mean it's like oh they knocked the block out quickly throw it back in 10 con 10 concrete later and you're at 5,000 hit points again so i don't know Anyway, that's the end of this one here. It's kind of the idea of this kind of base. Um, we'll get to see it a little bit more when I do the Darkness Falls series. Um, it's going to be a far, far better base. And most likely, um, I'm going to be playing like Darkness Falls. I'm going to try and stay out of the major cities. Um, I'll probably build my base just outside where the trader is. And I don't know why this spawned like this. It's just like a weird... The world just spawned very strangely for this, for some reason, for this one. This was in the experimental build, too, uh, when it first came out, that I, I started playing around in this world. So that's probably why it's a little wonky. I'm sure later, um, later builds won't be like this, but... Um, yeah, that's it for there. Um, I, I could do a, um, a video on how to build this, but I mean... It really is straightforward. It's just making sure that your corners here are three blocks thick at the bottom. This is two blocks thick here, you know. Make sure the, the wires are right up against the uh, the front here so that the zombies get caught and you can just drop pipe bombs on them. I mean, you don't need the inner one. You can just use the other one if you want. Or for that matter, if you want to just like quickly kill the horde without actually having to use wires, you could just leave them off and drop the pipe bombs down. You saw in the last video um, they would just come right here and try and break through, right? And as long as you're repairing here with a nail gun or a hammer or whatever, 
there's they're not going to get to you. Um, maybe later game hordes where there's like 64 max alive, um, then they'll. But this will be steel at that point. You know, then they have an opportunity to break through this and get to you. But they still need to break this block, right? And now they need to break this block. And then they get up in here, and at that point you're going upstairs, right? You leave at this point. If you can't re if you can't repl like replace these two blocks, you just leave and go upstairs, right? But they've got to break that one. They've got to break that one before they have a chance of getting to you, right? And at this point, you know you're in a little bit of trouble. If you can blow them up and clear this, then you can just quickly drop in, you know, concrete just to fill it up, and then they'll move over to this side and try and get in this way, right? At which point you're still dropping pipe bombs. So you've got plenty of leeway to manage the zombies trying to get to you, you know? Um, so if we go down here, you know, there's it's very, very rare, I think, unless there's like two or three demos that just quickly go off in front here and blow through the, blow through the front part. It's very, very rare that they would ever get to you. And if you make this a five by five, like I said, with it, like one, two, with a block like this in the center, and then two more, um, this, this building is so ridiculously structurally sound that I think even if we, now that we've recalculated the stability, let's actually have a, a test here of how much it would take for the zombies to destroy to be able to take this down. So if they, let's say they start breaking these blocks. So now they've gotten all the way into where you are on one corner and they still haven't taken this thing down right so you got to remember that these blocks here are connected to the ones above so they've got to take all these out all the way around so let's take out this side now too like this is a lot of blocks so that's three sides gone or two sides sorry all right, so now we're just held up by one side, right? It's just these two corners that are left. Working on the outside here. So there goes that corner. So now it's just this corner and these blocks. The base is still standing. You know what I mean? So, and then once you're up top, like, they're going to want to get to your level, so they're going to go up the stairs. You know what I mean? So the chance of this collapsing on you, like, I, I, I'm interested to see now. Now, they, I was going to work from the inside out, but let's work from the outside in. So there you go. There's like one, two, three, four, five blocks that were left there. So... You know, they can get it down to about five blocks of support on one corner, you know, before it will collapse on you. Let's just double check that. Because of course that'll happen. Yeah, there's some weird ass, some shit going on with the stability. I have no idea what the deal is. So maybe till that's fixed, I don't know. I don't know how you would, how do you get away from that? How do you, I don't know how you would get away from that. How else? Let's concrete attached to concrete. Maybe these blocks don't have the st same structural viability. That is a possibility. Maybe they're not seeing... Maybe the posts aren't as structurally sound. It's a possibility. So let's just double check this here. I want to see, for the sake of argument, how many blocks were left. So it is five. One, two, three four or five. Yeah, so it's five blocks left. And that's an angle block. So four regular blocks and an angle block. Yep. So, I mean, like I said, this is pretty darn sturdy. They have to pull this whole the whole rug out from underneath you. And the fact that you can just quickly throw down these while you're down here to replace blocks that they've destroyed to like fix the stability is you know no problem and then even if you're worried about it like if you were up above you could still just like like if you were on the ladder you could still just like quickly come down and do like this you know because now that's 
considered to be on the block below, right? And it just adds to the stability. So you could add stability, you know, if you needed to for whatever reason. So I mean, it's a pretty stable base. I'm interested to see how it's going to work in Darkness Falls. I bet you the Horde eats it for breakfast. 24 zombie Horde. Um, and late stage is probably going to eat this for breakfast. But I don't know. We'll see. Like, I mean, we did pretty well up to day 70. No, I don't remember what the hell it was when we finished. 100 and something. We did pretty well, but we didn't get to, like, the flyers and stuff. That's going to be a different story. But that, we should have so many turrets set up by that point that that should just deal with the flyers. And then we're going to be spending all of our time, <laughs> all of our in-game time trying to get ammo. That's the other thing, too, is it, it's, it'll be a battle for ammo, making sure we... Like, I mean, there's plenty of resources in the game. There's plenty of stuff to get in these buildings, plenty of brass everywhere. But we're going to be having to probably use steel jacketed rounds for the turrets and stuff. So, And then the gunpowder shouldn't be... It's going to be like a day of mining most of the time, like between hordes, to just be able to get enough material to be able to, you know, build enough ammo to be able to deal with the horde. So if we fight the horde... I mean, that being said, too, I mean, a lot of ammo drops in horde bags in later later stages of the game. If you watch Rudol's playthroughs, he gets so much ammo back in horde bags that it's like, hopefully we'll get be able to replenish our ammo just from the horde loot alone, because there's so much more drops in Darkness Falls that hopefully the horde loot will have just enough for us to be able to have enough ammo for the next horde. Um, and even if it doesn't, we can certainly go mine some and just use steel jacketed ammo, because getting iron in this game is so ridiculously easy. They've made the game so much easier. See, this one doesn't drop. Why doesn't this one drop compared to the other one? What was so different about that corner here that it collapsed when this one didn't? I have no idea. I don't understand. But anyway, you can see how these are put together. Just drop it down one block. Anyway, I'm going to end this here, guys. It went on a lot longer than I thought it would, but um, you can see how um, a base like this, it's a lot of resources, um, but once it's built, like, I mean, you can build your house underneath it, too. Like, that's what I'm going to do. In Darkness Falls, my house will be underneath the, the uh, main base, so if I get zombies at night, I can just quickly pop up, deal with them, and pop back down again. Um, but I'm going to build underneath the, uh, the base as my main house. Um, I know I'm going to have to be careful with structure and stuff like that. I'll make sure it's structurally sound before doing it. Um, although I guess I should probably test this base, like rebuild this as a 9x9 nine nine and then test. Eh, we'll do it in game. If it collapses, it collapses, then we're screwed. All right, I'm going to end this here, though. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for this base design too, please drop them in the comment section down below. I'd be interested to see what you think. Um, and until next time, we'll see you later.